I'm drinking Mountain Dew. If anybody wonders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure it is. Do you call Do you call those Incredible Hulks? It's Mountain Dew. See, not mm -hmm. even. <laughs> Looks like something loaded. Right. It's Mountain maybe Dew. It's it, it might have a little bit of gin in it, maybe. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway. I think I've got the software going, and let me see if you guys can see that. Whoops. Hold on. I can't see anything. I know. I'm just saying. Hey, Karen. There she is. Hi, guys. Yay. Yeah. Mm, see, I think this should be mandatory. We have to see faces. <laughs> yeah, I don't agree. <laughs> no, that's, you know what? That's the best part about Zoom. You don't have to do it. Exactly. Yeah. See, but there's all this fun stuff. If you click the three stars, you can have like a beautiful beach. I think this is a beach in the background. Oh. oh. Um, yeah. All right. Let me look. Yep. There are some good ones. Like the visual effects? Is that what it is? Mine's just uh, like yeah. a big star and two little ones, but yeah, visual effects. There you go. There. Ooh. I want to be at the beach. That's nice. I don't I don't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's just kick it off. Um, the only people we're missing is uh Ashley and uh Brandon's here. Um maybe he's listening still. And uh, Dustin's not here. And oh nine. So maybe one day they'll come. Um, I know just just real quick for everybody out there, the business partners that are here, I'm very thankful for you guys taking the time to, to meet up. This meeting is probably going to be pretty short because we don't have a lot to go over. And we'll just spitball some ideas. Um, and then part of it, I just wanted to get it out there that the people that don't come, I'm recording this so that they can watch it later, but also the people that don't come have no say in what happens to their money. So uh, Merry Christmas, people that are not watching. If you've given us some of your money and you're not here, you don't care. Should have showed um, up. Yeah. So I know like that kind of sounds harsh, but um, the business partner side, I want to hold people more accountable. Uh, our team members, like, you know, those are 1099 independent contractors. So, you know, I can't really say a lot about what they're going to do. But as business partners, if you want to see your money grow and you're not in here helping us grow your money, then um, it's not our business right now is not a very strong passive income generator yet. One day it will be. But right now it takes active participation. Um, all right. Well, before we get too far along, this is our agenda. <laughs> I put just chatting because um, we haven't had a meeting in a long, long time. And so um, I really just wanted to get together, say hi to everybody. Um, I believe everybody knows each other here. I don't need to do a around the room for intros. Um, and then I just wanted to kind of share some positions that I think that the company is in currently and where we, we may want to go and see what your guys' ideas are. So before we get started with my agenda of just chatting, what kind of questions do you guys have um, or what do you have thoughts about with the company or direction that you might want to just toss out first? I had know, a I, get once. Well, I had a question. Um, I know the the business partner chat gets pretty hot and heavy from time to time about individual properties and everything. And um, what, I don't know, short-term rentals. I'm, <laughs> let's just jump in and talk about that because I'm, I'm kind of curious sure. of everybody's um, opinion on short-term rentals because I've got mine, but I've recently uh, jumped into two short-term rentals and I'm kind of concerned with where the market's going. Uh -huh. uh, with short-term rentals and then, you know, the potential of one uh, of a purchase of a property with the short-term rental um, investment in mind. Um, so, I mean, I guess what's everybody's opinion on them, goods and bads? Um, 
So I know where Brendan's at. He uh, has got a couple of long terms, and I think he's getting ready to close on his short term in a couple days, or maybe half a week, maybe. And um, so I think that there's there's great returns on both sides. If you have a long term that makes sense and the numbers look good, I think those are those are very beneficial, and they're kind of the super passive wealth game. The short term rental space, in my opinion, has a lot more turnover headaches, uh, potentially, but there's more, uh, reward there as well. And so I think that we already have our long term or the first one. I think the next one would be pretty nice to do short term, especially with Brandon and his knowledge, um, especially having his own. So that's going to be like experience trial by far fire. And then, um, really kind of just picking up from the, the short term Academy that he went through. So in my opinion, for where I'm at, the short-term space looks attractive. I know a lot of people are getting into that space. And then with the potential for a market correction or whatever, I mean, it won't happen in Utah, but in other markets, it could happen. As long as we have the, the cash flow and capital to stay solvent, I think we would be safe. Um, we do have some capital that we could kind of... Uh, burn to stay alive that way, but we don't have a lot. And the getting into the next rental, just in particular, is going to take a lot of capital, and that might actually take that might take more capital than we actually have. So that may be us reaching out to more business partners and bringing them on. So that's just my two cents on that right now. But maybe Brandon, you can give us uh, some insight. That's. Uh... Yes. So I, I'm good with either strategy, depending on, you know, it all comes down to the numbers, right? Um, I feel highly confident in the short-term rental game out here because one, it's Northern Virginia, uh, two, because I can manage it myself and I can automate 90, at least 90% of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm again, confident that I can take it on while working, you know, eight to 10 hour days in a skiff with no access to my cell phone because I can do all that automation. If we're talking wow. about what's up, I said, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we're talking about really trying to target the, um, St. Augustine, Tampa, Daytona beach, uh, markets, I, I will admit if those areas look highly saturated, especially in mm -hmm. close, uh, de well, in dense uh, proximity. However, the demand is just as great, if not greater than, you know, where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, my only concern would be, again, going back to the numbers, if we are not going to manage it ourselves, we lose a lot of that potential revenue to a property manager. Unless, mm -hmm. unless, uh, was it, is it Rob, right? Your, your contact on there? Your old boss? Yep. Um, unless he has a good connection or network that can get us like, a full short-term rental PM for only 10 to 15 percent, then that's still mm -hmm. definitely worth it because even 15 percent uh, profit off of a STR is still obviously going to be much better. Usually, most uh, much better than a long-term rental. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, there, there it's all the trade-offs, right? It, the mm -hmm. STR can definitely work even with a PM if we found the right property for the right price and work out a good deal. But then again, the the long-term rental, depending on the market and where it's at might still do better than a short term it you know it, it kind of it's trade off right yeah no, I, I like that uh just kind of balancing it and the nice thing is, is like what you said if the numbers look good it's not emotional it's just you know if if the math looks sound then we pull the trigger um rob is interested in possibly managing whatever we buy out there so that is a possibility I don't know what he would do the short term for because that might take more uh, elbow grease, you know, but he, he's willing to do something, which would be nice. So we wouldn't have to, like, hire some outside consultant, of course. Um, so let's kind of dive into that a little bit because um, the the way to finance it, I know we've kind of talked a little bit about it, but I don't know if our corporation can handle the financing that we might need um, without a lot of, like, personal leverage or personal guarantees which i think we're totally on board for it just might take a lot of commitment and so 
then you really have to be sure the numbers are going to look good. Um, but I'll get, I'll give you a synopsis of where we're at. So, um, we have roughly 115,000 in the, in the operating account. We have about 9,000 and some change for the bonus account. And then we're floating about nine to 10,000 of other people's money in the earnest money trust account, which that one is other people's money. So I just threw it out there so you guys could see where we're at. So roughly with bonus bonus structure and operating account, we're sitting on like 120, 24,000 maybe. And then the property that we own outright, 3711 Lydia Avenue is probably worth 240 and some change. And we own that outright, clear, all cash. And so we could theoretically, and this is my opinion, um, without a lot of personal guarantees, if we found a DSCR loan uh, to do, we could probably pull about 160 to 180 out of Lydia Avenue and still cash flow positive. Um, depending on the rate, you know, the rate might stick us in the backside. So let's be conservative on that. Let's maybe say 160. And then um, from there, we could tap into the cash reserves and probably feel safe spending 75,000 out of the 110, 115 ish and feel like there's enough buffer in there to run and operate the company without any like real weird hiccups. Um, and so that would put us at like, uh, I don't know, 220 maybe with all cash. And so 220 isn't something big though, you know, so 220 only puts us to buying the next thing outright. We could totally leverage into the next one. But that's when extra commitment comes from everyone, either commitment and more capital. So that would be more shares, you guys buying more shares, me and my mom buying more shares or sticking more money in um, or personal guarantees and utilizing your credit and or my credit and or my mom's credit to get the next property if we have to do leverage. So if we used 220, let's say we did 50% down, we could go to 440 pretty easy, but 440 takes leverage. And so we would be leveraging the Lydia Avenue property plus the new loan on the new property. And so the, those, like what Brandon said, the cash numbers just need to look good and the numbers need to look good. Um, just leveraging the next property and getting a loan on it at the same time. I'm not sure if we have the commitment level and or extra capital from each and every person in this room. <laughs> And so we might be kind of capped at about 220. And so I know I just spit a lot of numbers out at you. So if you have questions, ask those. And if you have comments, um, feel free to chime in. <clears throat> 220 is, is definitely pretty good for a next investment. Uh, is there any particular reason why we want to go why we why you initially started out with shooting for buying outright Just yeah the um yeah the initial reason is to do a dscr loan on lydia avenue mm -hmm. and not tie our personal credits to the next leveraged property um because we could do the dscr loan on lydia avenue nobody has to be tied to that except me, I still have to sign and they have to pull my credit just because they have to look at it, which I don't care. And so we could get, let's say 160 out of there, bare minimum conservative. And then we could use cash from our cash account and go to like, like I said, about 220 and buy the next one outright and get ready to do a DSCR loan on that one. And, and the only reason I said that is to not tie all of us to the next leverage property. So it just keeps everybody's um, taxes cleaner, you know, a whole, a whole slew of things to just use the, the company's credit itself, which we've been building. I just don't know if it's enough to leverage the next property at the same time. You know, it might be, it might be two years from now, four years from now. I don't know. Uh, if we have a year if we have a year like 2021 in sales, then theoretically that could be 
a year from now because you know in 2021 we made about 80 to 90 grand in pure profit as a company somewhere around there so i i've got two one question and one i guess one statement um my first question is, uh, you know, a company I used to work for, um, when they wanted to acquire a new property, they went out and found investors. Um, you know, they never shouldered the the bill of building like their last investment they built an apartment complex um, on the east side of I-15 on Draper. Oh, yeah, the stupid hill that everybody hang glides from in Draper. Sorry, Brandon. You probably don't know what I'm talking about, but it's no, very expensive. I know what you're okay, yeah, it's very expensive, prestigious area. Um, you know, they go out and find investors, and um, you know, they use their money, and obviously, we'd have to deal with outside opinions. But you know, as we start to see profits, maybe we start to buy, purchase them out long term if we wanted to make moves fast. Maybe that's an option. Um, my other, I guess, question is with the company credit, um, and I'm super naive and I'll, you know, I'll just throw this out there, ignorant with it, but um, what are we doing to grow the company's credit? I mean, like, do we have, this is gonna sound horrible, so please forgive me guys, but like company credit mm -hmm. cards or anything else like that can that can exponentially grow um, the company's credit faster, so we're more credit worthy of bigger purchase items. But I mean, I, yeah. I, I hate credit cards. I absolutely hate them. So I understand if we all want to steer clear of that. I love credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you have more restraint than I do. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I'll, I'll kind of, uh, I'll kind of tackle that. Um, so yes to the investor side, I'm totally down to go down that road. It's just when we were kind of uh, spearheading the last uh, to get together investor, moving things, moving a lot of moving parts with trying to, to get investors in and people do it all the time. But I found the people that are in our room um, didn't particularly enjoy that scenario. And so I've wanted to keep it as low key as possible um we could totally do investors though i mean like our company is designed that we could bring on another investor let's say they brought 50 grand to the table that's 50 grand in shares and then that might be the capital that we would need to to get the next property you know we'd still have to leverage lydia avenue i don't think there's an avenue for us to to not do that and having it as all cash doesn't make a lot of sense in my opinion um, cause the cash flow is nice, but if we don't put that money to work, it's just eating, eating up a, a lot of our growth potential. Um, so I, I don't mind talking about that. I think lately we've had a harder time getting people interested in our growth just because the company as a whole is pretty stagnant, right? Like we're, we're growing, but, um, I can tell you right now, like the bank account floats right between 110,000 and 118,000 month after month after month so we're like we're, we're solvent but we're not going anywhere um and a lot of that is the market was hard and so for the last six months nothing really kind of went anywhere and so we were really shuffling a lot of money and flushing a lot of that kind of down the toilet to just stay stay alive and um you know now things are picking back up like what you guys have seen in the, the well the licensee channel so like zach and my mom and karen can kind of weigh in on that there's been more closings and more activity, which is always great. So we'll definitely kind of increase the bank account here over the next month and two months, maybe. Um, the second part, um, hold on. I was just thinking about where I was going to go with it. Um, oh, the, cre the credit part. So right now the only part that we build our credit or the only way because business credit builds differently than um personal credit and so there's a company called uh dunham and brad street or dun and brad street something like that and they have given us a credit not a rating but like our credit has green arrows that just point upwards like things are improving and the way that we've done that over the last year and a half, we've been a client of a company called Divi, which 
Um, if you guys have driven up and down I-15, there's a big black building uh, about, I don't know, 90th South, maybe 106th South. No, uh, it's got to be further, like 114th South. And all they do is give credit to businesses, but the way they do the credit is they have it on a debit card. And so you pretty much run off this debit card with a ceiling cap. And then at the end of the month, they just ACH wire the money right out of your account. And they count that as credit. So they're reporting on us as as that being like a credit card. So we have like a $7,500 limit. Um, some months we hit that. Some months it's way lower than that. It just depends on the month and what I've paid out for people that are joining the staff. Um, because people that are joining now, uh, the company pays for them to get started instead of my personal finances. Um, I transitioned that about eight or nine months ago, maybe something like that. And so we've got about, I don't know, maybe 9,000. I can show you really quick. Maybe eight or 9,000 of outstanding. I guess you could call it accounts receivable. If you want to call it that, it's just money that people have paid out or that I've paid out for people to get started. Anyway, long story short, Divi is the company that's giving us business credit or rating and a worthiness. And they they run that up to the Dun and Brad Street or whatever um, company. And I can show you what that looks like too. Yeah, 9,000. Oh, which reminds me, I need to fix this really quick. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is kind of interesting because uh, right now as a company, a real estate company, most real estate companies never have any accounts receivable. This is kind of an accounts receivable, but some of them will go to collections. That's just the name of the beast. I've got a new collections company that has teeth that um, prosecutes people or takes them to small claims court and does all that for us. So if people drop off and they don't pay, you know, after a year or two or whatever, we, ch we hand it over to the, um, to the collections company. And then we may see 60% of that back if they get to collect, you know, but if people don't pay back, then it's a, a fat zero. So even if we got 60%, it'd be better than zero. Um, and the big reason that, just so you guys know, the big reason that I do this to bring people on board is that if we find the rock star, they make a hundred grand, the company probably is going to put 20 to $25,000 of profit into the, into the uh, operating account. And that's worth it to me to find, you know, somebody that's going to do that. And we've had several people do a hundred grand in, in their career in their first like 18 months. And so to me, the, the risk of these funds, the benefits far outweigh these. Let me pull up that, uh, that other website. So while we're talking about that, TJ, actually, um, I was talking to my brother about that. Um, mm -hmm. And how you graciously pay for, I mean, you know, I, I can't cast any shadows on this, you know, TJ paid for my school. Um, but I, I've always, you know, when we were a young up, up and coming company, I get it. I, you know, I get it, but I often wonder now, you know, I mean, what's, what's the, the mindset behind it? Because I just, I really, in my opinion, and sorry, we're total tangent, but um, no, you're good. Oh, that, that, what is it? Two grand, give or take, um, you know, to, to buy the education, to be a part of the board, to pay your dues and everything else like that. I think, what does everybody think? Two grand, give or take? Yeah, two to three. It depends yeah. on when they get a uh, license for the year. Yeah, when they're prorated and everything else like that. I think that's a good gatekeeper. But, um, you know, I also understand that, you know, maybe we get that rock star person that it wasn't motivated before. I'd just be, I don't know. I was just always curious why you did it. And my, my brother and I were, uh, I st okay, whatever. I still don't know why you do it. <laughs> oh, well, let me, let me tell you. That's what I'm um, trying to say. You have faith yeah. in people that I don't. Yeah, no worries. Um, the, the real reason is that the, if I can get somebody to close, faster than waiting for let's say because let's say the average person is going to take 
I don't know, six months to make two to three thousand dollars of extra money that they don't touch. That might be kind of difficult. And so if I can get them closer to closing and faster, the amount of money that we make on the very first deal as a company uh, for one of our agents to close is probably between two to four thousand ish. Um, and so I'll, I'll tell you how it breaks down so that you can kind of understand this. Uh, we recently had one of our newest agents close. Great. That was amazing. Awesome. But this is how the splits work. Uh, they were at a 25% companies that or sorry, they're, they're making 75% companies making 25%. So they have to pay the company. Nobody gets around that. All of us have a split. All of us pay to the company. The remaining 75%, that piece, uh, they paid back what they owed out of that piece. And so they don't really get the first deal for free. They still have to pay the company. And so the first deal usually is about a 50-50 split. So in this particular case, the, the commission was like just shy of 16000 They made like 8900 The company made like 3400 And then... Uh, I got paid back because it was one of the ones that was still on my personals, um, like 3600 And so a $3,400 profit plus the payback, you know, they still made great money. Like $9,000 is not anything to kind of like to push off to the side. Um, but this, let's say in, in all, all the scenarios that I've paid out for people, sometimes they don't pay back, but it's more common that they close and then they pay the, the money back and the company makes decent profit on the first deal. Um, the other cool part is, is probably for the first like 10 deals, the company's split is pretty high and eventually it tapers off. Like Zach, you're at, um, you're at 15% for the company um, and moving closer and closer to 10%, which would be amazing. But for the first, let's say 20 deals that you've done or 15, you know, the company makes a pretty decent profit. And I, I don't say that lightly. Like I, I love watching everybody kind of grow and, you know, you've definitely done a great job and put a, a ton of money, extra money into your pocket, but the company does do pretty good in the profit department. Well, I, um, I get it. TJ, keep you know, we're, we're all, <laughs> this is about the bottom line, you know, and um those first 15 or 20 deals make sense for somebody that's yeah i get it mm -hmm. sorry anyway. to cut you off no you're totally good that's why i do it because uh i want to find you know the the sunnies of the world you know um there's going to be other people that hit our team and we gave them the leg up and then they do 100 grand their first year and you know that's something that's amazing that makes up for all the people that we have to take to small claims court. <laughs> I mean, right now I only have like 30,000 out for me and there's probably 9,000 out, like I said, for the company. So, yeah. But, but right. What would 39,000 do right now for us? Absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, honestly, we're, we're too far away from the next deal. Like, for it for that to matter but it is nice to have the cash on hand um but the only thing is is it's like 30 grand in my personals oh hi mitts and uh it, it's only nine thousand for the company so even if it was only nine grand for the company that's not doing nothing um uh, let's see i'm gonna show you really fast i think it's this one sorry about the tangent I guess I, I could ask TJ that on the side. Sorry, guys. No, you're you're good. Like I think everything we talk about in here is beneficial, just as a company. So so you guys can understand more of what's happening with the inner workings, um, and then I that for especially for uh for you Zach, like stepping into your own role here eventually, like you're going to be making these calls and stuff, which is going to be awesome. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We have a decline in supplier evaluation risk rating. I don't know what that really means because we don't really have suppliers. So, 
I'm not sure, but right now we have um, improved delinquency predictor and improved financial stress percentile. Now, one day, like uh, one day, I really want to make sure that we get the there's another like the pro version and it has all these risk assessments, trade payments, all of these other ones. And. And one of them is like a, a score, and I, I can't remember where the actual score is at because I've never seen one because I think it's in the pro version. Um, but it'd be kind of nice one day as we kind of really develop in the company and become huge that this is probably one of the avenues we'll want. Um, one side note to all of this is the people that I have access to over at the Miller campus that run like the small business administration stuff. Um, when we get really like dialed in on what we want to do, then I'm just going to go over there and have them give us as much like information as we possibly could, because the company as a whole, we might just not have looked at the right loan processes and we may be, may be able to do like, um, you know, maybe a five door complex or a six door complex. That's like a million dollars, you know, anywhere in Florida and, and make three of them short-term rentals and three of them long-term, you know, or whatever. I don't, I'm just spitballing. But the SBA may be able to give us great, uh, great terms because a majority of our shareholders are VA. And so that's something that we have access to. I just haven't gone down that road because I think we've talked about long-term, we've talked about short-term, we've talked about 220, we've talked about 440. We're kind of like all over the board right now. So I'm just happy that we're having this meeting so we can kind of talk about it. Uh, get things out in the open and kind of have question and answer time, I guess. What do you guys think? I do like the idea of a multi-unit because then we can split the difference almost. Yeah. I think the other cool part about a multi-unit is we may be able to still do DSCR loan on it and tie nobody's personal finances to it. <laughs> ask a stupid yeah. question yeah but it's not a stupid question uh well what's dscr loan i'm not oh. tracking you're good so dscr means debt service coverage ratio all it really means is the loan itself has to be able to be paid um by the rent that's coming in and they have ratios for that and if that fits their criteria then they will give you the loan and fund it um there's certain criteria with it but it's kind of like if you find a good deal then they will give you the funding for it up to a certain amount of ratio i'm tracking if if the rents equal the long-term price of the property here's your money yeah sometimes it's one percent you know or, or one to one so sometimes if it's you know the mortgage payments two thousand, and we're renting for two thousand. Sometimes they'll do that. Sometimes they're one point two five, so we'd have to be like twenty five hundred instead of two thousand. So they just have different ratios. Different states have them differently. Uh, but the SBA itself, I think, has great terms that we may be able to tap into. Um, and the rates are lower for VA members. So anyway, there's a lot of good benefits that we have as a company because of the people that are in here not just what the company's got going for itself. My next question, and sorry, Carrie, you've had your microphone muted the whole time. <laughs> um, why, I, I understand the focus on Florida because TJ, that's where your boss is. Um, for short-term rentals, um, have, have anybody, I don't know, and I'm just spitballing because not what I'm good at at all, but, um, you know, around national monuments or anything else like that, somewhere where it's a year round climate, but it's not ridiculously expensive. Um, first thing that's come to mind and I apologize guys, but like the redwood forest in Northern California, I don't know the climate there. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, if, if you can walk through the redwood forest 24, seven, 365, and there's no, horrible temperature deviations my example of that is like bear lake right it's mm -hmm. stupid expensive to get into bear lake you can't you can't mm -hmm. look at anything up there for less than like 
seven fifty and change, and your mm-hmm. rental window is four months out of the year. But that four months out of the year, it's exponential profit. Mm-hmm. Um, why? I mean, I get Florida is amazing, right? Everybody wants to go to Florida because tax pur- tax purposes, and we have a troop on the ground there. But um, like I said, the redwood forest just popped into my mind, right? It's the first thing I thought about. But um, yeah. it, I mean, does anybody have any ideas for short-term rentals outside? I mean, Northern Virginia, I get, you know, there's a lot of um, historic spots there, Washington, D.C. You know, I mean, even like when I go on a trip um, on the military's dime and all that stuff or anything mm-hmm. else like that. Um, is there yeah. anywhere else we could be looking? I mean, I... I'll do it. I don't care. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel like we're hyper focused on Florida, but this is yeah. me catching up. Well, surprisingly, um, Zach, um, Florida is actually pretty cheap for what you can get. So, and people are going there, you know, year round where like you were saying, Redwood forest or something like that, it's not going to be as high a demand. So, but people are going to Florida all year but it's because florida is great all year round i mean every mm-hmm. time you look in the news you know people are moving from new york to florida for tax benefits for retiring for the weather i mean import yeah. drugs and whatever. there's lots to do so you know we can search in daytona and they can they're an hour away to orlando and they're doing everything you know in orlando okay with tons of stuff right so yeah well but i would say one one key piece to that, of course, Rob's out there, which is nice now. Um, but the other key piece that we started down the, the Florida rabbit hole is because uh, my mom's sister lives in St. Augustine. So there would always be somebody that kind of could check up on it if we had to. Um, but, but more importantly about Florida is um, it would be nice to have something out there that we could have a discount code for anybody on our staff that would be like, hey, if you go to Daytona Beach, you know, use this like 50% off coupon or whatever, you know, use it for a week, you know, and go out there. Um, but on the flip side of that, like anywhere that the numbers make sense, I would be willing to look at. It's just we have kind of ulterior motives and there's a lot of there's a little bit of extra benefit to just going to uh, Daytona or Palm Coast or St. Augustine. They're all like within 45 minutes of each other an hour. So, but I mean, looking anywhere would be nice, you know, and I, I think we've got enough capital sitting there doing nothing that we should find something, you know, relatively, you know, I say relatively quick, but it might make sense to like scope it out and pick it up in October or November or even December when nobody else is buying, you know, just set up to have our loan ready in the next nine months. Well, six months and then like <laughs> go hot and heavy and pull the trigger on something. The year is going by too fast. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to I mean, remind everybody, you know, Christmas is only like <laughs> seven months away. Don't say it. Don't <laughs> say it. Oh my gosh. We're going to go there, Zach. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, we're going to mute Zach from now on. Right. <laughs> I'll just, You're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah. But the, I think the other nice thing about where we're headed as a company is that we have a lot of options. We are going to keep this rhythm, right? This whole second Monday of every month, just put it on your calendar. If you can log in, great. If you can't, that's okay. Like I said, if you don't come on and make choices with us, then just be willing to let your money ride. Um, But I do think that as we meet more, more opportunity will come around. Um, and it'll give me time to actually like go to the SBA and talk to everybody um, and see what, see what's going to happen there. Well, um, let's see, let me give you some uh, upcoming events. Let me go back to this uh, slide real quick. Um, And I realized that I made a password on this recorded video, so I probably won't post this. (laughs) Um, so the people that I spoke about, they won't even see this anyway. So whatever. Oh, maybe I can edit that part out. I don't know. Um, 
So let me give you some update updates. Uh, my mom's putting something on the calendar. It's going to be a kickoff shave dice before the summer. Um, I don't know where we're at on that. We're supposed to meet with Kit Bate, who's a lender that we're trying to really work well with. Uh, he has great follow-up systems. I think our business will grow because of him. And so whenever we get that on, that's going to be great. So it'll be shaved ice. We'll be paying for however many snow cones for like two hours um, at the lending office that he works out of. Uh, we have FitCon coming up this weekend. That should be amazing. We're doing an $800 cash prize. Uh, Fitness Realty is fronting $500. Michelle Reed, a lender, is uh, paying for $300. Um, we are going to do the end of the summer barbecue with tacos. Cause that's my favorite. So sorry if you don't love tacos. And then, uh, we have the state fair coming up at the middle of September ish, like always right now we've paid for the deposit on that, which was 500. We still have 750 to left to pay for, and we'll have to buy like $150 insurance piece, whatever. And we'll probably have to pay for power there. I think it's like 35 bucks. And then uh, right after FitCon ends, they usually hit us up to pay for FitCon again. So that'll be like another thousand. Sometimes it's 900, I think, with the um, with the discount. But with inflation of everything, the prices might be higher this next year's FitCon. Um, any questions about the events we have coming up? I'll wait. I don't have a question, but I've got an idea. Shoot Anybody it. Ask questions. No, I want to wait for somebody. I've been doing a lot of talking. We'll do some more talking. I want to know what it is. Well, y'all were about to put me on permanent mute, so <laughs> <laughs> only for saying when Christmas was. Um. So I mean, just total um thought process. Um, my son and I are going to AMA. Um. AMA Supercross at Rysicle Stadium. Uh, you know, Monster Jam, I, and I don't know if we would fit into any of this, right? But it, maybe, maybe not. You know, a lot of a lot of people enjoy motocross. A lot of people enjoy monster trucks running over cars and mayhem and everything else like that. And um, mm -hmm. but I have no idea. I mean, you know, you attach Monster Jam for monster trucks and an AMA Supercross, which monster energy drinks own a very, very, very good portion of that. But, um, you know, people love those things. And uh, I totally get that, you know, I don't want to call it a plateau, but, you know, our, our bank account does this across mm -hmm. how the market's doing. Um, what does everybody think about hitting more venues? And I understand it takes, you know, push from me and push from everybody to sit in a venue for eight to 10 hours and miss everything that's going on, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm game for 110% and I'm game to do the footwork. It's just, you know, how do we measure, you know, coming back in? But I mean, I guess what is, what is everybody's thoughts about maybe broadening, well, you know, the target audience yeah. that we try um, to hit? For, yeah. For me, I'm totally in, I have a goal to, promote two other events, but they have to be coming from somebody else on the team. So if they're coming from you, that'd be great. Uh, Fitness Realty will pay for half. You you pay for the other half and you run the event. We'll help you with as much swag or whatever we have. Um, and we'll give you like best practices to try to get as many referrals and leads as possible. Um, so we want to do that. You know, it just depends on how much commitment level like you say you have that you want to do the legwork and you want to um you know sit somewhere for eight to ten hours i'm totally down for that so if you pick it and we pay for half you pay for half and we'll get you some referrals you know i'm totally down so i know you mentioned that in the uh the i'm sorry guys i'm totally being being brain right now but the other meeting we had with all the licensees mm -hmm. um has anybody bit off on that i know karen i know you're talking about doing draper days right i think um, lehigh days yeah or I'm, lehigh I, something. i was looking into lehigh but that kind of got shot down because they don't let anybody have booths there that, that's not actually selling something gotcha so i was kind of can we 
sell shirts <laughs> <laughs> that say fitness realty. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's that blows me away. But I mean, I get it, city ordinance or whatever the city wants to have their their hands in it. But I guess my question is from the licensee meeting that we had, um, has anybody had any push on that? Or have you heard anything, TJ? Nope. Nope. 100% nope. Okay. Okay. I'm all just, for it. I just got to figure out. I'm just, you know, trying to figure out places to do it, I guess. Venues to do it. And... So, I mean, Karen, sorry to cut you off if I interrupted. I apologize. No. Um, I, and maybe this is for everybody, and maybe I need to speak to this in the licensee meetings. But, I mean, I look at things that I'm interested in. Um, like mountain biking, right? You know, there's huge mountain bike festivals and everything else like that. I'm into mountain biking. I can talk to mountain bike people about real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, I can segue those conversations from the topic at hand to real estate very easily because I'm competent about, well, semi-competent about the, the situation. Um, you know, something else I've thought about doing and, um, there's a local cigar company where, you know, people that buy cigars are, <laughs> they seem to be doing pretty wealthy for themselves because cigars are expensive, but, you know, um, reps come through and I'd love to partner with like, uh, excuse me. Um, the, the company is called Tinderbox and they have reps that come through and all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, if I'm with my target audience group of people that I can manifest conversations with, I can usually steer it into real estate. You know, you wear a shirt like TJ does all the time and somebody's like, Oh, Hey. Um, so I, I guess when you're trying to track down venues, you know, track down something like Karen, I know you drive a Jeep. I passed you on the freeway driving a Jeep. Um, how <laughs> awesome. I mean, you want to talk about worldwide and I have no idea how much it would cost, but worldwide, um reputation we get to the the jeep safari in moab that would be awesome but that i mean pretty cool you know i drive a jeep you drive a jeep we could speak jeep to those people <laughs> um and mm. all those people that are looking to potentially oh i love off-roading in utah and we hand out cards and they want to buy an investment property or a house in utah or you know i mean there's just a a, a, a gateway of multitudes of you know clients that we can harness we just have to have the tenacity to do it mm -hmm. yeah. sorry brandon no, I'm, no I'm, I'm totally with you on that like you have to be passionate about it that is honestly how fitcon came around and the state fair um i just have pure passion for both of those so i kind of train rolled my my mom on the state fair she you know but now she's on board because she has to love me still <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm with your mom. I'm like two thumbs down on the state fair. But anyway, I get it. It makes sense yeah. that people come from all over the state to go to the state fair. Yeah. Well, we do have a ton of like brand awareness during it. So even even sometimes if you host the event and you don't get very good referral traffic through it, the brand awareness is huge. And number two, the uh, power of inviting your entire network to come and see you out in a, at an event is huge because 90 percent of them are not going to come but a hundred percent of them are going to say wow i got invited cool you know th they won't show up but they'll think it's cool that they got invited and so that's kind of the leverage we're using on the shaved ice part just to kind of segue again um that shaved ice event we're going to try to invite our entire sphere which is ginormous like if we have that many people show up we're probably going to burn twenty thousand dollars in shaved ice but like I said, 90% of people won't show up. So, you know, it'll be a great time and we get the invitation benefit. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Uh, but Zach, I love your idea about it. Like I'm open to broadening it up. Um, so whatever that looks like, you know, and I mean, one side note to that is, I mean, you're, let's say you're three months from this transition time. Maybe that's a little fast. Maybe it's a little slow. Maybe you're three months, let's just call it that. We transition, we open up, and then the events that we're hosting up there have to be stuff that you are interested in and like local, 
you know, because we want local realtors that you might be able to hire and we want local people that you can sell their house and stuff and not drive too far. And so that might look like a, a Weber State like kickoff thing or, a, um, you know, a Davis County Fair or whatever. Well, I don't know what they all have up there, so I'm not as familiar with that. Uh, and one piece to that is I think Hill Air Force Base is completely untapped. We just have to figure out how to really tap into that. Trust me, I think about that like every other day. Um, every time a jet flies over, I'm like, oh, that's a pilot. He's probably getting ready to PCS soon. Yep. Yep. Well, and some of it might be the ADPI stuff. I know that's like circling back and you don't love that idea. But honestly, <laughs> it's pretty untapped as well. And we might not even need you to get into ADPI. You just piggyback off of my um, credentials with it or whatever, you know, and we just help grow it up there because eventually you don't really need it to be called ADPI. We just need more military members to understand the power of real estate up there and what value we bring to the table. But it's so hard to be a mouthpiece up there. I mean, I don't want to drag everybody to a sorry um but here we are chuck olson if you guys don't know about him i've done two deals with him already and the first deal i did with him he um was i referred my client to him but the second deal i did with chuck he referred a client to me nice. um, which absolutely blew me away um yeah. you know he knows ten thousand real estate agents but he does this uh program called home for, homes for heroes which mm -hmm. goes after police, firefighters, and military. And um, once I get my brokerage up on its feet, I really plan on par partnering with him uh, and just getting after uh, getting after Hill Air Force Base in that direction with Homes oh. for Heroes because it kind of hits home more than ADPI because ADPI is a acronym, but Homes for Heroes hits home for a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I love that idea. Uh, well, without keeping everybody yeah. on all night, Sorry. I appreciate everybody. No, you're totally good. I think that we've covered a ton of material. Uh, last thing I want to put up on this slide really fast. Um, please, please, please make sure that this number is saved in your cell phone as my cell phone number. This is the only number that I track all day long, every day. This other phone number is our text line that is the like business line side not the jive line but the crm that i use that just pretty much automates text uh, messages to string them and new agents and stuff so if you send me a message on this number and i don't respond it's because i just don't check i don't check this all the time so i'm trying to make sure everybody has my cell phone programmed and if you want to program this one into your phone just put it as tj's text line or the spam line or something, you know, and I'll send out information on that from time to time. But this is my uh, cell phone number. Hopefully it'll be that till the day I die. All right. Any uh, last comments, critiques, concerns before we bounce? Uh, my only uh, comment slash question or request, I guess, um, knowing that Obviously, like you said, TJ, we don't want the 110K to just be sitting in the cash account, not doing anything for us. Um, and so if anything, there's there's setting a goal for using it and then setting the uh, parameters for using it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we want the numbers have to work out. That's the, the that's the bottom line. Um, mm -hmm. But at this point. I'm open to any strategy that the, the team agrees with. Um, and I, I know, Zach, you asked the question, why, why are we kind of hyper-focused on Florida? And I'm good for long-term rentals. We can definitely go anywhere and still make it work for a decent 8% PM uh, percentage, right? Um, mm -hmm. However, now that you mentioned that Rob may be interested in not only managing it, but could possibly be interested in managing as an STR, that does make it look a little more favorable. Um, if we could do STR with only a 10, 10 to 15% um, PM fee. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, obviously we'd have to start vetting that with Rob, make sure one, he's on board with it too, to see if he has the 
if he can learn or at least get the credentials to be able to do a short-term rental PM, um, mm -hmm. I'm definitely I'm definitely on board with looking into that option. Um, but the only other question being, it, it also comes to a goal, right? How quickly do we want to scale? Are we okay going the long route and saying, you know what, let's just uh, if we can if we can build up 90 to 125k a year in cash mm -hmm. maybe we just add on, on a long-term rental every single year and and kind of call it good and then in like five ten years we take all that equity and get like a 10 million dollar apartment complex that is setting us up for for a good time mm -hmm. it, it depends on the the strategy what we all what we're all comfortable with and what we're all able to um, satisfy for time commitments right yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, on all of that, I think that the conversation we had tonight really kind of maps out a lot of the options that we have. Mm -hmm. I would say by next month, we kind of should have a game plan of kind of where we want to go with the funding that we have. And I'll try to bring some more to the table with the SBA. Um, and then I would set our, our goal or my goal has always been for the for the company is to pull some pull the trigger on something before the end of the year. I thought we'd do that pretty early, but um, obviously there's just been so much going on lately that it, that just was kind of impossible. Uh, but I think that if we pull the trigger on something by the end of the year, if not the first part of next year, because it may be one of those where we set it up and then we wait for January cold time when nobody's buying and we get a cush deal and I'm okay with that as well. You know, floating into the next year is exactly how I did my personal because I was wanting to do it last year in fiscal year, you know, or calendar year 2022, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen that way. And I did it 2023. So I'm okay with that. So I'd say for timeline, I really want to nail something down before the end of the year. And if it's something big with SBA funding, I'm cool with that. Um, but fleshing it out with Rob, like inviting Rob to one of these, I think it'd be crucial. So maybe it'll be next month. So yeah, uh, hopefully I answered all the, all that. <laughs> I'm good with that. Uh, and I, I do want to offer, um, depending on, uh, of course, what everybody agrees with, I can definitely underwrite any deal that we want to get into. Uh, I'm getting a lot of practice with mobile home parks, with multifamily, with short-term rentals. Cool. Um, so whatever strategy we want to go with, uh, I can definitely analyze it. So, okay. Yeah. I love that. And last thing, um, when we have events, uh, if you aren't like really pushing hard to show up and bring your family and bring your people, uh, you're not going to help us grow the, the cash account either. So, um, it just takes more recognition. I know Brandon, you can't do that obviously, but for everybody here in Utah, if you don't show up to stuff, that's making it really hard to get the name out there. I'm not going to the state fair, TJ. All right. Well, <laughs> um, and then piggybacking on that, if you're not wearing the logo like 24-7 or buying some swag and wearing it, yay, then um, that's not helping us either. So, um, But I know that sounds harsher in this meeting. Like I said at the beginning, I think you guys can handle it because you do have skin in the game. In our team meetings, I'm a lot softer. So, <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, I really appreciate your guys' time. Next time, I will um, try to bring some SBA information and we'll kind of dive into where we're headed in how to capitalize the funding from Lydia Avenue and where we want to go. I like it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Okay. And we'll see you guys next month. Thank, thank you. you. See you, everybody. Bye.